Welcome to another video on Microsoft Access. Today what I'd like to show you is a quick and easy way to get a, an application ready to deploy. And I want to start with a little story. There was a database that I worked for, a bookstore. You know, bookstore databases store ISBN numbers and uh, locations where the book is shelved and the title and the author and all that pertinent stuff to the book. Well, in the process of developing it, I was really developing it for just the owner of the store. And I knew that the owner of the store was competent and I knew he would stick to the things that he knew and he'd consult with me on the things that he didn't know when he wanted to make modifications to the database. Well, that worked out really well until the business grew a bit and had started gaining some employees. And some of those employees, of course, weren't as well trained, nor were they as well mannered in the respect that they took care of the database well. So I was in a situation now where I had to take another look at how we deployed that database. And so what I want you to show you is a quick and easy way to restrict your users to the things that are important in a database, but not allow them to go to places that they shouldn't be going. Okay, so I'm going to call up my database here real quick. And notice that I have a, a fair number of access objects, tables, queries, forms, macros, okay, all the things that, that operate and run this database. Now, this is genealogical data in this particular database. And so I don't want my uh, new users to look at the objects or try to manipulate or do the objects in such a way that they do something out of order and corrupt the data or any one of a number of issues that could happen when somebody who doesn't know what really is working in the database or how the database works. You don't want them doing things in, in that space, okay? So here's a quick and easy way to kind of lock down the database. And you find that in the File Options menu down here. So click on File. And then way down at the bottom, you find options. Now, what you see in options here, the general part is, you know, just normal stuff. It tells you where you got the database from, the file format, and so forth and so on. But what you're interested in is this current database tab here. Now, current database allows you then to say, let me give it an application title. Now, this application title here that I've already put in was is the title that appears up here. Otherwise, what will happen if you leave this blank, it'll just have the name of the database. In other words, the file name of the database as it sits on your hard drive. Uh, you can assign an application icon. If you have a particular one that is keyed to your business, you can you know, put that file right here. And then here's a nice one, a display form. What that'll do is it'll open up Microsoft Access to the particular form that you want the user to navigate with first. So let's open just the main menu form. And so let's have it just go straight to that form. And then when I, as I go down here, you know, I can tell whether I want overlapping windows or tabbed windows or any other of these items that you can read on your own. Now, I always choose compact on close because if I have data in this database, and in this particular database, I have the data residing directly in the database. A lot of other databases, I'll have a front end accessing data in the back. In another database, either SQL Server or Teradata or Oracle, or maybe even an access database backend. But what I want to do is when the user gets done using it, I want the database they're working with to compact and on close. Now what that does is it takes and removes all the extra field lengths. Like if you have a 256 character field length and you've had a lot of data entry in there, but they only tend to use 10 or 20 or 30 characters of, of that long field, it gets rid of all the extra data at the end of all of those fields. So compact on close is always a smart thing to do. But here's some real interesting ones. Navigation. This, this thing over here is called the navigation pane. And in fact, when we minimize it, you, you can see it'll be labeled navigation pane. But we can make it disappear for our users and not appear at all. 
Now here, if we've made a custom ribbon, we can identify a particular ribbon set that we have created and made. We can decide whether or not the menu bar is going to be by default, but if we have another menu bar set, we can determine that there. So allow full menus. Okay, here, if you allow full menus, they just stay the way they are. And so you have a few other options that you can choose up here. If I don't allow full menus here, I get the default set of shortcut menus, which allows me to kind of remove a lot of the damaging data, like the imports and the exports, and a few of those things that I can code into my forms and tables, but I don't have to allow users to try to create new forms on the fly or new um, data sets or tables on the fly. It just kind of keeps them out of trouble. So I will go and click OK here. Now it says you must close the current database for the options to take effect. Yes, that is true. It can't take away the icons on the menu bar up here and give me the shortened versions and it can't take away the navigation pane unless I close it and it does it at startup. So I'm going to click OK here. I'm going to, going to go ahead and close my database. And I'm going to go into my other window here a quick second. I'm going to op reopen it. And when it reopens here, notice what I have. I have no navigation pane over here. I have just the main menu. And I have a reduced set of icons up here. Notice it only has home up here. So you have basically the refresh, you know, find, replace, go to, switch windows. It doesn't have anything that can really do any damage to the database. And it's just a very quick and easy way to lock it down without having to do a whole bunch of custom ribbons and custom menus. You're able to quickly take away um, the essentials and give them a form that looks very clean. So hope you've enjoyed this. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you much. If you enjoyed the content that you saw today and would like to help me grow the channel, hover your mouse over my picture to the left and click on subscribe. There are also other videos showing on the screen that you might enjoy.